In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to following the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For his preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. Our first reading begins from the seventh chapter of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen, holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. The second reading comes from 1 Peter, the second chapter, beginning at the second verse. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A wealthy man and his son loved to collect rare works of art. They had everything in their collection, from Picasso to Raphael. They would often sit together and admire the great works of art. When the Vietnam conflict broke out, the son went to war. He was very courageous and died in battle while rescuing another soldier. The father was notified and grieved deeply for his only son. About a month later, just before Christmas, there was a knock at the door, and a young man stood at the door with a large package in his hands. He said, Sir, you do not know me, but I am, a sol I am the soldier for whom your son gave his life. He saved many lives that day, and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him in the heart, and he died instantly. He often talked about you and your love for art. The young man held out his package. I know this isn't much. I'm not really a great artist, but I think your son would have wanted you to have this. The father opened the package. It was the portrait of his son painted by the young man. He stared in awe at the way the soldier had captured the personality of his son in the painting. The father was so drawn to the eyes that his own eyes welled up with tears. He thanked the young man and offered to pay him for the picture. Oh no, sir, I could never repay what your son did for me. It's a gift. The father hung the portrait over his mantle. Every time visitors came to his home, he took them to see the portrait of his son before he showed them any other great works he had collected. The man died a few months later. There was, a, there was to be a great auction of his paintings, and many influential people gathered, excited over seeing the great paintings and having an opportunity to purchase one for their collection. On the platform sat the painting of the sun. The auctioneer pounded his gavel. We will start the bidding with this picture of the sun. Who will bid for this picture? There was silence. Then a voice in the back of the room shouted, We want to see the famous paintings. Skip this one. But the auctioneer persisted. Will someone bid for this painting? Who will start the bidding? One hundred? Two hundred? Another voice shouted angrily, We didn't come to see this painting. We want to see the Van Goghs, the Rembrandts. Get on with the real bids. 
But still the auctioneer continued. The sun, the sun, who will take the sun? Finally, a voice came from the very back of the room. It was the longtime gardener of the man and the sun. I'll give you ten dollars for the painting. Being a poor man, it was all he could afford. We have ten dollars. Who will bid twenty? Give it to him for ten. Let's see the masters. Ten is the bid. Won't someone bid twenty? The crowd was becoming angry. They didn't want the picture of the sun. They wanted the more worthy investments for their collections. The auctioneer pounded the gavel. Going once, going twice, sold for ten dollars. A man sitting in the second row shouted, Now let's get on with the collection. The auctioneer laid down his gavel. I'm sorry, the auction is over. What about the paintings? I am sorry. When I was called to conduct this auction, I was told of a secret stipulation in the will. I was not allowed to reveal that, that stipulation until this time. The only painting of the sun would be auctioned. Only the painting of the sun would be auctioned. Whoever bought that painting would inherit the entire estate, including the paintings. The man who took the sun gets everything. Our gospel text is quite familiar to us today. I think I have done more funerals that have included this text than almost any other except for Psalm 23. Jesus is having a discussion with his disciples the night before he goes to the cross. At the Last Supper, Jesus washed their feet, foretold of his betrayal, told them he will soon be leaving, and that they cannot come with him. And he goes on to tell them that they will join him someday in his Father's house, because he will bring them to him. And Thomas knows how they're going to get there too. If Jesus is gone, what are they going to do? And Jesus gives him directions. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now this isn't a threat to the disciples. It isn't that they have to get things right. This is a promise. It is a word of comfort. It is that while Jesus is leaving, he will come back to bring them to him. It isn't that he's keeping people out. He's actually bringing them in. And as often happens in scripture, and as happens with us, Philip doesn't quite get it still. Philip wants more. He wants better proof from Jesus. He says, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. His whole ministry his whole life, Jesus has been pointing people to God. He had been showing people God. And even as he is saying goodbye, Philip still doesn't get it. He still doesn't see God. Like the people waiting to see the good paintings, we miss the best one right before us. Jesus explains that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. He has demonstrated God's love for the world, for all of us. Jesus is our link to the Father. In being the way, the truth, and the life, he shows us God's love. He gives us God's love. It is thrust upon us and we needn't even ask for it. God's love will never be taken away from us. For Jesus promises to be with us forever through the power of the Spirit. And the Spirit will work in and through us to accomplish God's mission in the world. That mission is for us to put our trust in God. That we put our hope in the fact that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And because of that, we demonstrate the love that God has shown us toward others so that they can see God's love. We have been given an inheritance of immeasurable riches because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has already been won. It has already been given to us. And so let us share that good fortune in our words, in our deeds, spreading hope in a world which is hurting. Amen.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, Mother and God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. 
By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>